Japanese car brands sell very well almost everywhere in the world, particularly in the United States. For example, of the 14.6 million vehicles sold in 2020 in the North American country, Toyota, a Japanese brand, ranked second among the top sellers with 1.8 million cars, or 12.5% of the market. And Honda, another Japanese brand, ranked fourth with 8.2%. In contrast, of the 4.9 million vehicles sold in Japan in 2016, just over 13,000 were U.S. brands. That is, between all brands, such as Ford, Jeep, and Chevrolet, owned only 0.3% of the Japanese market. Even Ford pulled out of Japan in 2017 due to poor sales performance. So, the question is, why did American cars fail in Japan? Is it because Japan imposes tariffs on imports? or because American cars are too big for the Japanese consumer. Currently, Japan does not impose tariffs on imports of cars from the United States, so this would not explain, in principle, why American brands do not sell well in Japan. However, there were decades of strong protectionism that prevented these American brands from growing in the Japanese automotive market. It turns out that in 1923, Japan suffered a devastating earthquake that wiped out its vehicle manufacturing infrastructure, creating an urgent need to import Ford trucks as a temporary measure to solve transportation between the affected regions. Seeing that Japan was a market with a lot of potential, Ford established itself in this country in 1925 and General Motors did the same two years later. At that time, American vehicles dominated the Japanese market until 1936, when automobile manufacturing industry law was passed in Japan with the aim of eliminating dependence on foreign manufacturers and promoting the domestic industry, partly for security reasons, since vehicle production was to be focused on the military needs of the time, as the Second China-Japan War was about to begin. Thus, in 1939, American brands stopped production and were forced to leave Japan. After World War II ended, Japan continued to protect its automotive market. Its national brands grew and competed with each other, and interaction with the American brands that had arrived at the turn of the century had allowed Japanese manufacturers to learn from their technology and develop their own products. After more than three decades of protectionism, in the 1970s, Japan began to open up to international trade, but the Japanese were already used to buying domestic cars and knew little about American or European cars. So, even though there are no import tariffs today, protectionist policies in the past did prevent Japanese consumers from knowing or having any affinity for other foreign brands. But that is not the only reason why the Japanese do not buy cars from the United States. The needs and preferences of Japanese consumers also play a role. Japan is a relatively small island, with an area about the size of Finland. It is home to 119 million people, so its cities tend to be densely populated, which means space is limited. This is in contrast to the United States, where most cities are flat, sprawling, and low density, so space is not usually a problem there. In addition, the infrastructure is car-friendly. This has allowed car brands to manufacture large vehicles. In 2020, the best-selling vehicle in the U.S. was Ford's F-Line, second was the Chevrolet Silverado, and third was the Ram 1500. This does not mean that all vehicles made in this country are large pickups or SUVs, but it may indicate that both consumers and brands have different preferences than the Japanese. In fact, the best-selling vehicle in Japan in 2020 was this Toyota Yaris, which is more fuel efficient and, because it is smaller, it fits more easily in Japanese cities. Therefore, also the so-called K-cars have become very popular, very compact vehicles that cannot exceed certain measurements or exceed 660 cc. These mini cars represented in 2018 36% of the total new vehicles sold in Japan and, obviously, American brands are far from producing this type of cars. However, it is not just size that makes it difficult for U.S. brands to enter the Japanese market. There are consumer perceptions that are very difficult to change, such as the stereotype that U.S. brands have very low quality and short service life. And even though the brands have made more fuel-efficient, reliable, and durable engines, their reputation remains low in the Asian country.
because, in the past, Japanese manufacturers have tried to market U.S. cars but had trouble passing Japanese quality tests. The best known case is probably that of the Chevrolet Cavalier. But apart from that, there is another drawback for U.S. brands, and that is the experience when buying a vehicle in Japan. The way buyers choose cars in Japan is very different from traditional U.S. shopping. While in the U.S., they tend to choose from what is available at the dealership, for Japanese, buying a car is prestigious and honorable. They prefer to customize their own car, both inside and out. Dealers often bring vehicles to customers for test drives rather than having them come to the dealership. It is also common to include free maintenance with pickup and delivery to the customer's home, and they usually include the side of the vehicle on a regular basis. This level of service and this different experience than what Japanese customers are used to requires a significant investment on the part of the dealer that U.S. brands are apparently unwilling to make. And, not least of all, in Japan, people drive on the left and the vehicles are right-hand drive, and U.S. brands generally don't make them that way, which makes it an additional hurdle. So, does all this mean that foreign brands don't have a chance in Japan? BMW, a German brand, has shown that it is not impossible, but it had to invest about $700 million in renovating its dealer network to try to meet the expectations of the Japanese customer. In its dealerships now, there is a cafeteria service, activities for children, a less aggressive attitude of the salesperson, and a room for vehicle delivery ceremonies. This from the head of BMW Japan. In Japan, it's all about hospitality. If you don't focus on this, it will be very difficult to succeed in the Japanese market. This view may explain, in part, why European brands such as BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen, and Audi have performed better in the Japanese auto market. These German brands sell 70% of all imported vehicles in Japan. However, the Asian country is still practically controlled by domestic brands, only 6% of the cars sold in Japan are imported, and therefore, perhaps U.S. brands are not encouraged to invest in a dealer network, marketing, or good after-sales service because the potential for them is limited. There is also a low level of interest in their brands due to persistent stereotypes in the Japanese mind about American brands. Rather, these manufacturers seem to show more interest in other parts of the world with greater growth opportunities, such as China, the country with the world's largest vehicle market. In short, U.S. vehicle brands do not sell well in Japan because of the initial protectionism of domestic brands, their size and fuel consumption, the historically low-quality image of U.S. vehicles, and the Japanese customers' expectations of the buying experience. The question that remains is whether the big American brands like Ford, GM, and Chrysler will end up selling only pickups and huge SUVs in the U.S., or whether they will have the capacity and interest to adapt to the needs of consumers in other parts of the world. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.